the very first step of survival of an organism in response to any environmental stress is the perception of the fact that the environment has changed and this is called perception of now stimulus is perhaps any change that is occurring in the vicinity of the organism where it is living so any change which may be a physical stress such as heat or varying light patterns or a chemical stress such as salinity or heavy metals that can bring about a change in the organism's homeostasis so any change that is beginning in the environment and is being perceived by the cell that is considered the primary signal or the primary stimulus and when this change is relayed further on the inner side of the cell such as any changes in the metabolites or in the phosphorylation states or any such change so that the signal can be relayed to further compartments that is called a secondary stimulus or secondary signal so primary ones are those that are originating from the environmental cues and secondary stimulus are those which are arising as a result of primary stimulus so stimulus perception is basically conversion of any physical or chemical stimulus into the biological signal through the sensory mechanisms present on the cell so there are various proteins and various components which can be considered as sensors but there is a basic problem with identification of these sensors as the sensors are very important for understanding the changing environment and environment keeps on changing continuously so a cell has devised various mechanisms so it is not dependent on just one sensor so the basic way how we study the function of a particular protein or any or organelle is that we go for loss of function mutation so if suppose we are trying to study a sensor x and we cause a mutation a loss of function mutation in the gene for it then perhaps cell will give that function to some other protein this is called functional redundancy where the function is shared by several components so in that case the actual function of the sensor is not identified easily so even then there are some properties that make a criteria for a true sensor those include that whenever there is stress there, then there should be some change in the structural property or in the activities of that component second it must be able to transfer that change to further compartments that is there should be a signal transduction there should be a relay of message and third beginning with this structural and functional change in the sensor because of the stimulus perception there should be some change in the biochemistry and physiology of the cell or the organism okay so that a response is generated if all these three properties are there then a particular component may be considered a true sensor so here we have receptors carriers channels several enzymes which can be considered as sensors for stimulus perception